photo of hit chat group chat i am one of your hosts connor reynolds below me i have jp bashan jp how you doing sir good 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 uh yeah i mean it's wednesday it's wednesday my dudes <laughs> love it love it uh and then as always we have the beautiful connor burns from the great white north connor how you doing Hello, everybody. Hello, John. You're doing well. You're doing quite well on this new Here digs, my guy. Digs, new digs, new office, couple pictures. Okay, we'll call you. Okay, we get a little Coolidge education, huh? I did a Bachelor of Science in Business. Thank you, Jeez, uh, good. Um, so facility is done? Question mark. Completely. So, facility's done. Let's go on a walk, gentlemen. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Baby. Let's go. There we go. Let's see an Apple podcast. We need to switch over to YouTube now. Switch over to YouTube right now. Okay. So, this is the office right here. All right. Got a couple couple desks right here. It's mine and uh, my coworker Ethan's desk. Only one monitor, uh, right? Uh, no, again, I got it. I actually, I'm going to buy a, this is my shitty laptop. I'm getting a, getting a computer and a whole setup here in the next week. So, um, yeah. got the old TV right there. Nice fridge, little couple cupboard, sink, Keurig over there. Good setup. Yep. All right. Let's bring her into the field house here. Power move having the office in the kitchen. I gotta say. Yeah. Power. Um, let's go wait room first. Guys are playing ping pong right now, so we'll go see that. But uh, that's sick. Front lobby area. Ooh, Got the gym. Not bad. Three squat racks. Ooh, that door is going to be so nice to open up in the uh, one yes. month that you guys have summer. <laughs> Shut up. That shit the hell up, man. <laughs> okay, so that's the weight room, and then we got the uh, the field house here. Full field house. Oh my god. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Not bad. And we got the three cages over here. Oh. That is sick. And then we'll go we'll go over here. Little we'll hangout area. I got the ping pong table. Got some couches. Well, guys just hanging out being dudes and then yeah i'll get a golf sim over there eventually and uh yeah not bad wow do you have the oh. whole thing do you have the whole thing knitted yeah whole thing's knitted oh that's so nice live yeah. abs live abs live abs so yeah no more than enough room to get shit done so hell yeah yeah, yeah. fired up fired up to be here Oh yeah, uh, not many excuses you can have to not get better. We'll be on oh, exactly. No, and then Jesus Christ, Dom. Check that football app. Um, but uh, no, yeah, and like the like I'm here right now. I told the guys just can literally they can hang out until I would need and spend hours here all the time. They usually will hit a long time after play ping pong, whatever. So yeah, great, great setup, great setup. That's what you want to see, the boys hanging out. Mm -hmm. I got to kick them out sometimes. It sucks, but. Yeah. yeah. Walk is good. Walk is picture we got here. What do, what do we got? Okay. So this is just my high school team. My brother coached me, a couple good friends, and then a little dog pile. We fucking won a lot. And that's my me and my brother right there. And then up top, it's uh, me at Garden City where I fucking shoved. We'll forget, I guess, baby. And then, uh, well, Derek Jeter, because he's my favorite player. And then my fucking college degree right there. Oh, yeah, baby. And then, got some other shit put up. Like, you guys can see that right there. We yeah. And they got some nanny picture we got to put up somewhere. So, little, little housekeeping thing still to get done. And then, kind of in the back area, like, I printed off, I don't know, printed off a bun bunch of these pictures, just like, Guys in different positions at big leaguers po post them up there. I want to get a whiteboard. Um, just put up different information on it all the time. So, yeah, pretty, pretty all coming together. Just got to do some 
well house scheme should make it make it more cool but yeah exciting however many whiteboards you have get like five more we've got uh we've got three in this room alone we've got one we've got well this the, this room right here we've got it's literally for just our rosters and recruiting and stuff and then got one in the gym we've got a, a like a dual flip one that like rolls around for different teaching stuff and then i think we're getting three for the back area a couple bulletin boards and stuff so yeah so well, that's a lot of work okay i'll get <laughs> dude you can never have enough whiteboards like that's fine i have one giant one two down there i think i have five on the floor and then i have another five that are just like the little mini ones that you can write on you can never have enough whiteboards yeah i, I would actually a, a little one might be nice just to have well and what i really like doing is so i have all of my drills uh that have a qr code and has like what the drill is and so um when you scan the qr code it takes you to a youtube video that like walks through how to do that drill and so when I've done like stations and stuff like that, I just hang the whiteboard next to the station. And then I have the QR codes that are like what drills we're doing there. And then you just go through. And so that way you don't have to keep stopping. You put how many reps of each drill, stuff like that. Like it makes life so much easier. Yeah. Well, I, 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 and then I got, uh, I got only guys on their own, like they'll have their own Google sheet. So I literally write other programs kind of in there. So. They already know them, so we don't even, we don't even need them. And then I have a uh, another sheet with just like my full YouTube library that they all have access to. So if they don't know a drill, pop over there. You know, the there's just not to not to plug. Right. I was gonna say there's there's a program, but there's a program that like houses videos and data and programs. Yeah, I've already got a good. I've already got a good program. It's called the Burns program. It's working pretty good. It must, you know, you got the big facility, you know, you can be rolling in money. I mean, you know, invest in some of the times so that you can you know, let, do less programming, more coaching, you know, less, less data analysis, more pro, more coaching. True. Are you saying that as a, as JP, or are you saying that as a driveline employee? What is I'm this? saying that, I, I don't, I, you know, I did the Google Sheets, uh, my first, you know, coach at the University of Dallas, and that was a monster. Um, so I can't imagine doing it with more guys. Yeah, I got like Lamar. We started doing. We started using track. It took a while to get used to, but I can't imagine not having it now. Not fair. It does. It, it, it does it, cost some money, though. I will say it, it's kind of like yeah. I've been. I've honestly been thinking about it just because, especially now with like a lot more athletes, it's there's there's just a lot of a lot of sheets, a lot of sheets. Burns really quick. You just want to plug your barber. Dude, guys, I just <laughs> like I like my hair. All right, sorry, boys. Nice, that was nice. You're looking good, dude. I mean, we got the jacket, we got the Blue Jays hat, new office. Man's feeling himself. Feeling pretty good. Gonna get this tooth in soon, boys. The tooth's coming in. Went to the surgeon. He said it's all good. So I just gotta get the crown put in. We're good to go. Let's go. Could be a whole new man pretty soon. Well, yeah. Whoo. JP, you got uh, you got anything for us to kind of run down the rabbit hole? I, unfortunately, I wasn't on too much social media, so I didn't get too much too much beef riled up. Uh, so you got a uh, you got a rabbit hole for us to run down? I do, I do. Uh, it's a little bit different this time. We're we're gonna go. We're still sticking in the sciences, but we're gonna talk less biomechanics. We're gonna talk more about Okay, so today we're going to talk about descent angles. Okay. Um, so what is a descent angle? Okay. Uh, before we get there, let's start with how batted balls get their spin. Okay, uh, It sounds a lot less complicated than it uh, can get, uh, but essentially... If a ball is sitting on a tee, the point of contact that you make on the ball, so whether you're going to miss on the top of the ball or you miss on the bottom of the ball, and then the attack angle that your bat is moving, so the angle the bat's moving into the ball, 
is going to affect the spin. So I thought this was a really cool gift um, from a video uh, of a guy trying to hit a ball, uh, trying to break a world record for distance uh, hitting a ball. So he built this little bat uh, with some explosives in it, <laughs> trying to hit a ball. But I thought this was a really good visual for uh, a guy missing on top of the ball uh, with similar attack angles, uh, missing in the middle of the ball, or not missing, hitting the middle of the ball, uh, or hitting the bottom of the ball, and the different spins that uh, that create. So. You can see kind of the top spin catches the top of it, going to create a lot of top spin, catches the bottom of it, going to create a lot of back spin. So we're looking for kind of that middle one where we square it up. But obviously when we're in a game, uh, we don't get the opportunity to just set it on a tee and hit it. So we have to take into account this guy over on the left, that descent angle. So the angle that the pitch is coming in to the strike zone. Um, so a curveball is going to have a really steep descent angle, fastball is going to have a really flat descent angle. Uh, so that little angle there, and we match that up with our attack angle, and that gives us uh, kind of our uh, offset, right? So uh, the offset is kind of measured between the center of the ball and the center of the bat. And the amount of offset is going to affect the amount of spin, you affect your exit velocity, it's going to affect your distance. Um, so all of that comes into account. So we can see the two graphs here. Uh, the top graph is going to have exit velocity on the y-axis and then the amount of offset in inches on the x-axis. So we can see the minimal amount of offset is going to create higher exit velocities. Uh, the more offset we get, the the more exit velocity we lose. And then on the bottom there, we have distance relative to offset. So the more offset we have uh, to a certain amount is going to create more distance. Uh, it's going to create just enough backspin to carry the ball. If we start to get too much offset, we get a lot of spin on the baseball. It kind of floats in the air and we don't get as much distance uh, along with the, the loss of exit velocity. Cool. Watch it. Um, is it bad that every time you say offset, I think of offset? <laughs> offset. <laughs> like literally every time I want to interrupt you saying that. Not at all. You're going to be thinking that a lot then. <laughs> all right. Uh, so descent angle, right? We got a curveball coming in uh, and a fastball. The fastball is going to have a lot flatter descent angle. You can see that red line's really flat. Uh, much more parallel with the ground than the curveball coming in. So curveball is going to have a little bit higher uh, descent angle uh, coming into the strike zone. So how does that affect uh, our, our kind of front toss? So uh, here's a GIF overlay of two front toss baseballs. Uh, when we toss a baseball, we don't typically think about descent angle, uh, but you can see the drastic difference between these two uh tosses one has a negative 17 degree descent angle one has a negative seven degree descent angle uh and as a hitter you're going to have very different reactions to these kind of pitches so we have an attack angle of seven and a descent angle of negative 16 and you can see when that plyo comes off the bat it's coming off with a lot of spin so he's essentially cutting the plyo uh catching the bottom of the plyo uh and it's got a lot of spin uh so uh, an attack angle of seven is pretty good uh, and so what the athlete is typically going to do, okay, I cut that plyo. He's going to make an adjustment to try and square it up next time. But if we want an attack angle of seven, which is in a pretty good range, uh, that's going to provide improper feedback to the athlete. He thinks that's a bad swing because the ball didn't come off flush. He didn't square it up. So when we change the descent angle, keep the attack angle exactly the same, like in this swing, uh, attacking or descent angle goes down to negative nine. Attack angle stays the same. And he ends up squaring this this plyo up uh, pretty well. So that feedback loop is going to say that that's a good swing. So the descent angle of our flips, especially flipping plyos, is going to have a lot to do with the feedback that the athlete's going to receive and then the adjustments that they're going to make off of that. So how can we now kind of reverse engineer that, right? We know descent angle matters uh, and it's going to affect the feedback that our athletes get. How can we use descent angle to train? So let's say we get a guy like this who comes down uh, pretty hard on the ball with a little bit lower attack angle, and he ends up catching the bottom of it and cuts it. Uh, the way I like to describe this is like ping pong shot. If you were going to backspin a ping pong ball, you're going to kind of come down uh, to the ball, catch the bottom of it, and give it a lot of backspin. So to kind of use descent angle to train this, if I want the athlete's bat to work a little bit more upwards, I'm going to change that descent angle uh, to be a lot steeper. So for him to now square this plyo up, he's going to have to adjust his bat path. His attack angle is going to have to get higher to actually square this pitch up. So uh, kind of one of our go-to drills 
uh, is what we call softball tosses. So you kind of toss the ball up in the air. You have a really steep descent angle as it comes back down, uh, trying to land it on the plate. And so the athlete has to match the angle that the pitch is coming in with their attack angle uh, if they want to square that ball up. We can also do this in the opposite direction. So we get a guy with a really high attack angle and he kind of top spins it uh, like a ping pong shot. We want the descent angle to now be a lot flatter. Um, and so one of the kind of go-to drills is velo at the top of the zone. So this can be done with smash balls, baseballs. You do a front toss like I'm doing here. Um, but you can see how kind of much effort I'm putting into the toss. Um, I'm trying to throw this thing fast. What a lot of guys will do when they have uh, higher attack angles is they'll try and time up when their attack angles in a good range So the velo that it's coming in is going to force them to move a lot faster uh, Than they're they're kind of used to and it's going to kind of mess with their point of contact and timing a little bit So make sure that we have a proper attack angle at a bunch of different points of contact um, And keeping at the top of the zone is going to force that kind of flat turn uh, To get there and keep that descent angle pretty pretty low so descent angle when we're flipping uh, has a lot to do with the feedback that the athlete gets um, and also the realistic training environment that we're providing for the athlete. Uh, on average, fastballs uh, at kind of the college professional level are going to come in anywhere between negative four and negative seven, depending on the pitch location. Uh, so if we're consistently training in environments, uh, especially like flips, where our descent angle is like negative 13, negative 14, that training environment isn't really uh, equivalent to the the game environment that they're going to be hitting and we could uh, unintentionally be causing some adaptations in our athletes that we're not necessarily looking for questions questions is there at any point where when you guys are going through and you're looking at uh, adjusting an athlete's attack angle like you said if they have a higher attack angle the velo is going to make them change and try and uh, find that like optimal time where their bats making contact. Is that something where like a 45 open and 45 closed that extreme, uh, like adaptation of where they're just standing Would that then also change how the timing of which, uh, their bat needs to come through the zone and at what attack angle their bat needs to come through the zone at. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of my kind of go tos for guys that, um, have a little bit more of a u-shaped bat path so they come into the zone really steep kind of bottom out really quickly and then they have really high attack angles kind of with points of contact further out front um like adjusting the angle that their body's at is essentially adjusting the the point of contact right so if you're at 45 close relative to your center of mass you making contact at the front of the plate uh is going to be a lot further out in front you're going to have to rotate your torso rotate the bat a lot further um so that's a good way to kind of adjust your point of contact when you're kind of working on your attack angles that's kind of funny. Did uh, uh, John did an article about this like last summer, right? I did an article about this last summer. I was gonna say, oh, 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 oh. damn it, I turned wrong. I didn't know. I know. Yeah. Uh, good luck yeah. finding it. Yeah. I didn't hear it. No, that 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 was good. I didn't. No, honestly, I remember reading it and I was like, fuck, I didn't even, wouldn't have even thought about yeah. that shit yeah. and like, the, the only reason i started thinking about it was because it comes up on the hit tracks mm. um no, that makes sense. well it's one of those things too where it's like especially a lot of our guys like when i got three cages running like i'm not able to just yeah. front toss everybody so it's like literally have front toss school of like hey motherfuckers this is how you need to front toss like yeah, yeah. you can't just yeah. fuck you, you know what i mean yeah. but yeah yeah good shit J. roll it up there when mm -hmm. i JP and I were talking before this and he was like, you know, what, what topic should I do for my down the rabbit hole as he's looking at a, a catalog of different, you know, PowerPoint presentations he could give, um, with a lot of guys looking to, uh, either, you know, games are starting, whether you're a coach or a player or whatever it is, I feel like, especially at the youth level, um, a lot of players will go through and will just, you know, do plyos in the outfield right before a game or high school, you know kind of same idea you're in a cage you know you have like burns you just said you know athletes are throwing athletes stuff like that and it's one of those where i don't think a lot of coaches like truly like look into the little things like that maybe one because they've never thought of it 
Um, I feel like a lot of coaches, but then two, it's one of those where if I'm going through and let's say, uh, you know, I got one kid that has too steep of an attack angle and one kid that has too, uh, much of a, too much of an attack angle going up, you're probably going to need to, you know, warm them up differently. And that doesn't always mean that you have to have different stations, different drills, this or that. Like you as a coach can make those adjustments and you don't even have to tell the players that you're doing it on purpose, right? Like you have one kid come in if their attack angle is too steep, like JP said, you do the softball drill. Then you have another athlete come in if their attack angle is too, uh, you know, deep or whatever, like they're getting way too high of an attack angle. Then you add a little bit more velo to those piles where they're a little bit flatter and they have to make that adjustment. Um, for a lot of coaches, I feel like that's not necessarily a thought or maybe they don't value it. And so kind of putting this out there, you'd be like, hey, you know, how you warm up or how you go about your just front toss, um, you can make it as game-like as possible uh, if you're willing to or wanting to. Yeah. Yeah, and just changing the pitch angles is such a good way to have uh, the same stations and individualize the training still. Uh, you know, and and then tossing in some like offset open, offset close, forty five open, forty five close. Uh, like now you're messing with points of contact and pitch angles. You can do a lot with the same environment. Uh, to to kind of individualize it for athletes. Mm-hmm. Also, I got, I got, shut up. Um, I got, like one of my guys, like like you said, I think we talked about it before. Like, he had that cl- the classic like U shape, like his attack angle was like eighteen. And like a lot of his plows right now, I've got him doing like uh long long bat. And I'm like literally right in there. I'm like, tell the fucking person throwing that it needs to be firm and it needs to be top of the zone. Like firm top of the zone. Yeah. Like you have to make sure that and then literally I was like the other day, he was just like I I can't remember someone was tossing and he was just like, Lucas, get the fuck out, get somebody else to toss. Cause like he just like, couldn't fucking do it. Couldn't do it. Yeah. 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 It's surprising, I feel like, that it's one of those things that I feel like a lot of people don't, like, quote-unquote practice or, like, go through. And, dude, the amount of kids that I've seen get hit because they're not behind the screen or the amount of kids that are, like, throwing it and, like, acting like they're throwing grenades because it's a throw and just duck, like, jump behind the cage. And it's like there is... You know, not to toot our boats as uh, coaches, like there's there's something to the front toss, boys. There's something to it where I mean, you know, it's nice, it's special, and it really does, you know, change the swing. It really does. And one of my favorite things that you mentioned in there, I think it was called improper feedback. Mm-hmm. Like that happens all the time. I'm actually writing a, a thread right now where I didn't know how to like what to call that. Um, an improper feedback. I like that a lot because then it tells the athlete or the hitter that, hey, you know, I did this. This was the result. This is the adjustment they need to make. When it's like, no, like you actually don't need to make an adjustment. The guy throwing needs to figure it out, right? And if you're a coach that just, and I think it kind of goes into also those pit uh, coaches when they're doing BP, where it's like you have to swing on every pitch. And it's like, well, now we're getting like the wrong feedback, right? Like, if, and the amount of times I'll I'll talk with my players, well, well, I'll throw a pitch, you know, they'll miss it, and I can see them like trying to make adjustments in their swing, and I'll just look at them like, hey, was that a good or bad pitch? And they're like, oh, you know, I need to do this, I need to do this. I'm like, no, 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 stop. Look at the hit tracks. Where was that pitch located? And they're like, uh, at my eyes. It's like, yeah, like. You don't need to change your swing. You need to change the fact that you swung to begin with. Like your swing is fine. And it's that improper um, oh, feedback, feedback uh, you know, that's telling them that they need to do one thing and they actually don't. So I like that a lot. Yeah. Well, I'm, fuck, I'm, I literally, I make my guys front toss and I make them have to learn how because they just, they, it's a skill. There's yeah, nothing worse than hitting in the cage and your fucking partner sucks at front toss. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They got to learn to do it. 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's three things I think every coach should take a lot of pride in. Their BP, their front toss, and their fungo game. You got those three dialed. 
You're halfway That's there. That's the sign of a quality coach. Um, I have an athlete. This is, we're changing subjects. Great transition, Connor. Good radio. Um, I have an athlete, one of my college guys I do remotes with. And while he was here, this dude's bat speed is stupid. Like, we've talked about in the past about how Blast Motion caps bat speed at 90, right? Um, and Driveline found that out through working with a very special and unique individual. Um, I actually found this out by working with this athlete. So this guy uh, will average probably between 80 to 88 bat speed. Um, he's six. Six, he'll tell you he's six five, he's six six, um, about 110 pounds and just whippy, just very, very fast through the zone. Yeah, and pounds 210. Okay. So said, 110. Oh, my bad. If if I said 100, said 210, I apologize. Um, dude's whippy, whippy, and all throughout his high school, I was be- uh, his last like two years, I was begging him to go up to a 34. He played at a 4A school where they didn't see anybody throw over 83. I was like, dude, please, please go up to a 34. Wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it. Bass speed averaging 87. I'm like, dude, just grab a 34. Please just tickle the pickle for me and just grab a 34. Finally gets a 34. He's out at school, at, and I'm going to vent a little bit, so hopefully if you are the coach and you're listening – Figure it the fuck out, dude. This dimwit sees my player swinging a non-team bat. This dude got two team bats. They're at a shitty-ass D3. Got two team bats, okay? That's not why it's a shitty-ass D3. But team-wise, they got two bats. I think it's a 32 and a 33. And my kid's using his, like, brand-new 34. And he walks over to him and goes, hey, why aren't you using one of the team bats? You know, I got those for the team. And he goes, oh, coach, like, you didn't get a 34. And, like, I'm not complaining. Like, I got my own. Like, we're good to go. The coach looks at him and goes, you know, you have too much bat speed with that 34. I think you would have a lot more control if you were to swing a 33. And has been bugging my guy about... Why? Why? I just don't get why you won't just swing the thirty-three. I just don't understand. So, I love the reactions, boys. I love the reactions because this is my reaction. Too, too much bat speed, and he, he thinks he would have more control with a thirty-three. Yeah, because you go lower, right? The lighter the bat is, the less bat speed we're gonna have. And also, I love the assumption of just, like, if he uses smaller, if the, if you had less bat speed, you'd be able to control it better. I've trained a lot of kids with no bat speed, and they don't control it any better. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> it's oh. brutal, man. I got, I got, I, that just, that's a tough seat, dude. That's a tough seat. It goes back to, like, one of our first podcasts where we, uh, we talked about, like, how do you, how do you work with coaches? Right, like, how do you work with coaches that are coaching guys you train? Like, how do you, how do you do it? So, like, what's what's been your your conversation with the athlete? Like, hey, this guy's a fucking idiot. Don't miss this. Great <laughs> right. I mean, pretty much. Like, it's one of those where I'm just like, I mean, we can get more into it. like the 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 thing is is like the dude's a freshman. Hasn't played. He played one game over a ten-game like road trip that they had in Florida. The only reason he played is because three of their other starters got in trouble for like uh, public alcohol, like having alcohol in public. So he gets the start, has uh, a line drive ribby up the middle, makes some great plays and stuff like that. And the dude's like, I still don't understand why I'm not playing. I jokingly go, well, it's probably because he won't swing the 33. And he, like, lost it. He lost it. Just was like, well, I don't understand. And I was like, dude, I don't understand either. It doesn't make sense. Like, it is literally going against, like, the laws of physics. Is like what this guy is trying to do. And so, like, I'll be honest, like, 
I really haven't had too much to tell him. I don't know if that's me just not being educated enough of like what to say or do, but it's just like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't think you should swing a 33 to get by with it because, like, it's going to, like, it's going to mess you up. Does he, does he just swing and miss a lot? Like, is no contact hold you a huge issue? Like, no. how do you not swing the bat that, how do you swing the bat that fast and not play at a D3? Like, he strike out a lot? Like, no. Like here, I, that's that's what that's what I always like go to is like, well, have you talked to your coach? Like, have you put pressed him to tell you what you could improve on? And so that is, coaches are, coaches are fucking stubborn, and they, they if you don't do something they want, it's it's just like an act of defiance against them. They won't reward that. That's what it is. Coach telling you, hey, swing a 33. Oh, I'm going to keep swinging a 34. Oh, this guy's not listening to me. He's not bought in. I'm not gonna... He's not a team guy. Big big me guy. Honestly, what it is, big me. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, fucking swing swing a 33. Like, if that's if that's what the coach comes back to, is like, hey, you know, I just don't think you're a team guy. Oh, yeah. And I just bring that, and he starts, he starts bashing. He's like, oh, see? Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. I was talking to uh. I was talking to one of my college guys, and he's all we worked on all summer, all winter, was like, "Hey, dude, like you pull your hands inside the baseball, and it makes it really hard for you to pull the ball, and you just slice everything the other way." And so, like your best result is an opposite field single, uh, and you're a big dude, and you hit the ball really hard, so we can't have that be your best outcome. So we worked on like keep it back. Try and pull the ball. Try and get the outside part of the ball. Just keep those hands back. Get the bat working a little bit more out in instead of just pulling the hands through. So he shows up to school, and the 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 only drill that they really do is all just like pull the hands inside, fist it the other way. Pull the hands inside, fist it the other way. And so the season starts, right? And my guy, my athlete, is is like, hey, you know, I they want me to not the the team approach is like we're not swinging at inside pitches until we get to two strikes and we we don't want to pull the ball like we're just we're looking for something on the outer half and we're looking to hit it the other way and i've just i've been really struggling just not having good at bats and like i keep i keep getting jammed and like catching balls off the end of my bat and like flaring fly balls opposite field i'm like yeah yeah, dude, because that's like the exact opposite thing you need to be thinking. You're already really good at that. Like, you need to think, pull the baseball. It was like, well, you know, I thought if I showed I could do the team approach, like I'd get more at bats. I was like, what's more realistic? You do the team approach, and they recognize that, and you get more at bats, even though you're not performing. Or you do the approach that you know is going to make you better. You hit a bunch of home runs and doubles, and the coach goes, See, that's that's why we play this guy. He's got the team approach, <laughs> you know. Like the, they don't know. They have no idea. Well, it's the famous like, you're hitting. Coach comes over, is like, I, hey, you know, do this or this, yeah. and you go, uh, you no, know. and then you rope one, and it's like, I'll see. You just gotta listen to me. I mean, I'll be honest. Like, I'm probably the freaking worst at it. My fa- my famous saying in here is weird. It's almost like it works. And, like, probably 75% of the time, they're not doing what I asked them to do. But you know what? In my head, I said something all out of nowhere, bada bing, bada boom, must have been me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the worst at it. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the coaches just care about, did you play well? Which is why my first question was, like, does he just strike out a bunch? <laughs> you know? So I looked about striking out. He's had five at-bats. We have... One hit, one RBI, two strikeouts, and that's like that's the entire stat line. And I mean, I don't know. Burns can attest to it. Like, I think I had batted three hundred in both of my years at Garden. Was top five in the country both years for strikeouts. True. So out of the three hundred that I batted. I think I struck out a 40% clip for both of them. 
So like literally Yo they have like sixty plus each year, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's absurd. That's an absurd stat. Oh my I, god. I'll tell you what though, man, especially our freshman year, like we you and Brooks were like top five. We shook out a good amount. We also like were like top fucking ten and doubles and extra bait like we fucking mashed though we just sold out why would you swing that much that's my question the only way that you hit 300 and strike out 40 times in a year is if you're just swing no 40 percent well reynolds reynolds fucking free swung buddy he was yes like you gotta be just swinging you just up there to hacks man yeah oh man and the worst part, it wasn't until halfway through my sophomore year I figured out if you don't get to two strikes, you won't strike out. <laughs> Truth. The best that's the best two strike approach you got. That is the best two strike approach. If you Yeah. Don't get two strikes, you can't strike out, man. It is that's fair. That is fair. Hey, still bad at three hundred both years. No, for sure. For sure. It's just yeah. <laughs> I get it and I'm like, we are missing out on so much production. You are swinging. There's no shot you're swinging good pitches early in the cafe. <laughs> I remember a lot, a lot of curveballs in the dirt just before. <laughs> and hear the bat. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, Oh, yeah. But you guess what? If that curveball's not in the dirt, hit hard. Hit a single. I'm bad hit at hard. 100. <laughs> Dude, no, I remember... Like, there was one time where, like, I don't know even what the hell was going on. This dude threw me. It was when we played Hutch. Uh, Burns, do you remember when we played Hutch and they brought in that sidearm guy that threw, I think it was, like, 28 sliders in a row or some shit like that? Like, literally just... Was that Hoffman? No, no. Um, It was the dude that... It was at Hutch. It was the dude that they brought in after him. And literally, like, just sat there, slider, 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 slider. I don't know how or what was going, like, literally threw me two sliders, not even close. Swung and missed at all of them. And the dude was like, I guess I'm going to throw the slider in the zone. And, you know, bada bing, bada boom, here we go, you know. So one of those, it's the, it's the definition of improper feedback, but just happened to work out. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I guess I keep swinging at these. I don't know. Easy. Yeah. No, I, ne- I never got the memo to quit swinging. That is my, that is uh, it, uh, like my first piece of advice for dudes with like, you know, what strike a bunch. It stops swinging so much. I promise you're not swinging good pitches. Okay. Or you're just, or you're just taking to get to two strikes. You pull the dub burns? Yeah, 54 hits. So, yeah, 100, 76 at bat. 54 hits, 15 doubles, three triples, 10 bombs. Sorry about it. 47 RBIs. Holy fuck, man. That is such a bad walks of carry show. <laughs> 17 walks to 66 tricks. <laughs> no. That, no. I mean, no. How much? Holy shit. Now, hey, one thing that gets unnoticed. Go ahead and look at those uh, stolen base numbers there, dog. Ten, ten stolen bases. I was in the ten ten club. <laughs> you were in the ten ten sixty club. Seventeen <laughs> walks to sixty six strikeouts. That's insane. That's insane. What's crazier is that they kept playing you. I think most calls would not. Okay, let's let's get into the reason why. Um, as a dude, as a team, we had four hundred forty three Ks to three hundred forty one walks. Well, that's what happens. Me and Brooks both were top five in the country for strikeouts. That's sixty six and sixty three. We literally were a third of all of our strikeouts as two players. Now, if you want to tickle, if you want to tickle my pickle, go to those sophomore numbers. Yeah, tickle that pickle. No, well, it also helped out. Like, our leadoff led the country in walks. Um, 
our nine hole hitter batted four thirty with like seven uh, nukes. We, we had the best. We had the best eight nine in the country. Oh, okay. All right, dog. Forgetting about that seven eight nine combo. Uh, <laughs> me, me, CJ, Alex. But all right, yeah. Forgot about the seven. Because I think CJ also hit eight bombs. So like I hit, so I hit ten. CJ hit eight. Nielsen has our nine hole batted four seventeen or four thirty with like seven or eight bombs, and then our leadoff, like I said, was top in the country for walks. Brooks was our two hole hitter, who hit ten like eight, nine or ten bombs, led the country in strike or top five of the country in strikeouts. Like, dude, it was heavy hitters, but like the lineup made a lot of sense. Because you have Aeneas, who, like, led the country in walks, right? Well, right after that was Brooks, who was a free swinger. So it's like, all right, we got this really fast kid on first. Are we going to throw balls in the dirt to hopefully get this kid to chase? Well, if we do that, then this kid's going to be on in scoring position for the two, three, four, five hitters. So you, they left the pitch more elevated. So, like, anytime Aeneas was on or leadoff, Brooks was essentially going to see pitches up. Those are what he drove. It's like... It was dif- yeah. dysfunctionally working out. We we fucking yeah. I I was just looking to we had like over two hundred and fifty more RBIs than our opponents. Like we fucking banged, and then we had what I think it was one hundred sixty four doubles, fifty nine bombs as a team. Like we fucking yeah, we never lost it. Never lost the series. Five percent less. Dude, you hit seventeen bombs your sophomore year. God dang. Only played half of the... Look how many games I played, too, because halfway through I hit a slump, so me and Jesse started switching. 20, 20 walks to... I mean, you, you still had 61 Ks. <laughs> God! Let the, oh, that makes me cringe. Led the conference that year. Oh, Jesus. I was very much the opposite player. Low strikeout, <laughs> high walk, and hit 17 less bombs in my entire career. <laughs> no, it was a good time. Well, what's, what, what's really fucked is if you looked at my numbers from month to month, the first month I had 10 bombs. I have, I have five in five days. Like, one drove me insane. Yeah, February you had yeah February you had nine home runs, then March three, and then, oh March you were bad. Oh, yeah, we started conference play. It's almost like there's like scouting reports that go around. scouting report going around saying no. And I right, the- and I can go to the moment, the moment that my sophomore year went. Pew! Okay, so February hot start, shortest month of the year, most bombs that year. Okay, hot start. Then we go and we play Colby. Colby was our opener. Okay. Um, uh, uh, New Orleans and I were talking with each other. They were supposed to come out to Colby. It was essentially like, hey, we just want to come out and see you. After that, bing, bang, bong, come out for an official, sign the thing, and we're going, right? So I'm like, let's go. This is easy work, right? All of a sudden, last second, they couldn't make their flight. Shit happened, whatever it was. They couldn't come. Well, and... uh, the uh, Jayhawk, you go a seven and a nine, and then a seven and a nine, right? Uh, first day, set. Uh, I think it was the nine inning. We're away at Colby. Runners on second and third, down by one run, two outs. I come up to bat in like the top of the ninth. All of a sudden, they bring out this kid named Carlos. Carlos is wearing goggles. I I can't remember his last name, but they bring him out. Dude's nasty slider. I strike out. Okay, like, all right, whatever, whatever. Second day comes up, exact same situation. Top of the ninth, runners on second and third, two outs. I come up, who do they bring in? Carlos. Carlos strikes me out the literally the exact same way. Like both days, like exact same way. After that, dude, boom. Literally was like trying to stand on top of my head to get a hit. Like I literally was trying everything. Worst thing to ever happen. That's a confidence killer for sure. I don't know, man. I'm looking. I got the whole game. <laughs> yeah. No, go to Colby. 
Better call me. You were not. You were not bad. Cloud, you're fine. Butler, you literally had a hit every game. You went one for three, one for five, two for five, two for five, and then and then you went zero for four against Barton. Then you went zero for seven against Barton. How do you go? You oh, I can't. I'm. I can't even believe this. Fifteen fourteen win for us. You went zero for seven. That is out in the weed. Bro, pull up that. Like, what was that? Like, what? Like, what? What did I go that day? You went zero for a well, yes, five k, five k's. Oh my god! Yeah, no, get out. You're gonna sit on the bench, my guy. You didn't, you didn't play the next day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's no completely understandable. But so why I didn't get pulled as much? I actually got pulled a good amount freshman year. Uh, Reed Efren, shout out to Reed. Reed was our other shortstop. Dude had a broken, like, leg. Yeah. Dude had a broken leg. So, literally, like, couldn't, like, play. But they would, like, have me play till the eighth inning and then put Reed in in, like, the ninth. Or, like, Reed would play, like, the last inning and a half as a defensive replacement. But, like, we didn't have anybody else. That's the, uh, hey, that's where I thrived. That's where I thrived. When we didn't have anybody else, I was the guy. Hey, don't forget three hundo. Yeah, that's that's that is impressive. That is impressive. so that if Burns, if you remember, we played was it McCook, the last series of freshman year, I think. Uh every every year the last wouldn't Pratt. That was a that Pratt was our last uh, conference series that year. Was it Pratt? Yeah. No, not conference, just like general, like last series. Hey, Pratt. I'm fucking gonna pull this up right now. Yeah, pull it up. I'm I feel very good at Espa Cook. Cause every year, those two years, the last three weeks, I called it the push for three hundred. So I would always be at like two seventy. And then it was like, hey, we gotta push for three hundred, boys. And both years, I made it out at like 300 and 301. Goddamn. 300 push, dog. Hey, coaches just saw that. They'd love you. And then they look at the Ks and they're like, hey, dude, I'm telling you, 40% clip. Imagine if I just struck out like 15 less. Yeah. You'd be so good. Yeah, it was crap. Was McCook sophomore year? We played McCook in a midweek, and then we played Pratt for the last four. The last, the last year too, we finished off with Seward. Well, I'm way off. Yeah, I have a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was uh, it was good times. It was fun times. Um, just uh, right now, my boner is starting to fade already. Uh, do you mind pulling up Nimi, the stats from Nimi sophomore year, and then I'll be good? Oh, my God. Yeah. Re- reliving the glory days. <laughs> and I've got one dude that Burns, you're going to remember, literally was my nemesis from Nimi. My nemesis. I think I went to combine like 0 for 8 against this dude over two years with probably 8 Ks. Oh, it's fucking... As he's pulling this up, so Nemi, New Mexico Military Institute, they had one hot ballpark. Shit was hot out of there. But two, they had this dude, JP, no disrespect, all the love, maybe 5'5, five, five, maybe 5'6, five, with the goggles. And I don't think threw over 70 miles an hour. I truly don't think he threw over 70. If he did, maybe 75. And they would bring him in. I remember one year they had this tall-ass lefty that was probably like mid-eights, up nine. And immediately right after that, they bring in this little dude and it's just like lobbing shit in. Could never get a, could never get a hit against this dude. Never. In both years. And I remember sophomore year telling all the other hitters about this kid as they're bringing him on, and I look out, and I was like, oh, you got to be shitting me. 
you had to all run at every game. The whole, there we go. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Damn, you had, you had you had whole run five games in a row. One of them was Lamar. Oh no, never, bro. It's honestly impressive. But here's my question: If nobody's on, like, what's the strikeout? Oh, here was the other thing. Love Jesse. Love Jesse Dutch. Who's my other guy? Jesse led the nation in double plays. Guess who never hit a uh, double play? Because I just always struck out. I was gonna say. <laughs> you just got out. Although, like, what's a strikeout if nobody's on? I mean, true, but if you're striking out forty percent of the times, then it's not really. This you know, I, we, I think we uh, we go a time machine. We go back to work with a uh, young Connor Reynolds. I think young Connor, dude, I would love to work with young Connor Reynolds. I, I I'm getting all over he is that nice, bro. See, some swing decisions going, you know, look stuff like that. Well, you're ready. For, you're ready for this. Like, I honestly like looking back. My biggest thing is I just slid my hips. Yeah, you'd slide your hips and just go. Yeah, so, like, I had to commit to the pitch, like, early as hell because if I didn't commit early, like, I didn't have enough time to get my hips to slide to then turn. Like, I was late on everything. So it was just like, I, hey, like, I, I'm going into this. You had no... A 40% no, no, strikeout rate cannot be chopped up to you sliding your hips. That is not the only reason. Well, it's you not the only reason. Every, it swung at every curveball in the dirt. Yeah. Well, yeah. So long at, your approach was had to have been terrible. There's an, okay. Oh, let's let's work as this as hitting coaches. Okay. Uh, okay. If okay. if I if I swing and miss at every curveball in the dirt, it's because I have to be on time with a fastball that won't be in the dirt. What do you mean? No. It's could. I would argue. I would argue it's because you're not looking for the right pitch. If you're swinging at a curveball in the dirt, you're looking for pitches that start too low. Yeah, I thought it was a fastball every time. Yeah, don't look for that fastball. Look for a fastball up. I couldn't hit a fastball up because it took me forever to slide. Well, then that, that's what I would say. is like, hey, we gotta, you can't look for it. You are so bad at making decisions. You can't look for a fastball down the middle. You have to hit the fastball at the top of the zone. Or you're going to strike out 40% of it. I, I'm telling you, like, I swear that's why. Like, I literally just would swing at everything because if I, like, didn't have the aggressive approach, like, I was late on everything. I was like, well, I'm not going to be late on a fastball. That's the one thing I can hit. I I will give you props. You you probably maximize your physical potential with, with like, the swing that you had. I was going to say, I don't want to hear that. Physical <laughs> But, like, the, the, the mechanical potential that you had i will say you probably oh yeah no like the thing is is i've gone back and i've looked at you know what we can do that we can have fun um shit <laughs> we're gonna be doing this for another hour and a half now <laughs> no i'm literally gonna pull up one video and i want you guys to let's break down this video this would be good to do this would be good to do we could break down old old hitting videos. We could break down uh, Bernsey's pitching video. YouTube TV has no hidden fees. I could do that. And include Disgusting. Us. We just see the, we, I just pull up the radar gun and be like, hey, Burns, you see that? That's, that's, that was your problem right there. <laughs> All right. And so. Oh. Come on. There's a lot going on. Man. The fact that that's a home run is crazy to me. You think? The fact that 300 with that swing is crazy. Oh, no, this is when I was in eighth grade. Okay, okay. okay. All right, that makes it a little... That makes more sense. Yeah. Hold on, we're saying that this is a bad swing? What? A hip slide. Hands drop. Low side bend. I'm not saying it's a good swing. I'm getting destroyed. Because I... You ready for this? I think that's the best swing of all time. <laughs> Just getting roasted. 
this is, I think that's an amazing swing. Like a heel plant, that's when I start to turn the hips. There is side bend, then you know, a little bumbo, and then boom, all the way through. I think that's, I, I keep, give me a, give me it all, like shit on me. I don't, I don't care. Like, I want to hear, I want to hear what the, uh, what the experts say. <laughs> Burns, what's the first thing you do with a guy like that? What's the first drill you'd give a guy like that? Let's hear it. Oh, Pro I mean, fuck, I don't, I, I look so ugly. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I, sorry. It's a, no, it's okay. Shit on me. That's fine. Like, I want you to shit on me. I start getting, doing some high tea or something, like the hands just go. I was thinking a little, little offset open, little offset open yeah. short that. Actually, get, it's a little bit deeper. Because I'm pulling up, I've got another. Jesus Christ. How many fucking videos do you have? Shout out to the pops. Oh, yeah. No. no. Hold on. If, okay. if that was bad, I would really shit on this. Like, no lie. Like, shit on this. It is okay. This was bad. Oh. Oh, it keeps going. Whoa. Yeah. You literally can hit low pitches. What yeah. the hell? No, that was bad. A hundred percent. Like that's the bad like, swing. The me like, looks like this, right? like that looks like the same swing. You just caught the other one out front. Yeah, you sunk in your front knee weird there. Was... Oh yeah. No, that's just some pure athleticism. Get, some coach said, Hey, you gotta get in your legs more. Burns was like Roger. <laughs> Reynolds was like Roger that. <laughs> oh no, mine. My, leg. my thing was always a uh, get your foot down early. Oh yeah, well you did that. You definitely did that because I was always late because of the slide. So I was like, all right, we're just gonna plant this thing and keep going. <laughs> well, all right, now it's time to swing. No, oh, that was bad. Yeah, that's not ideal. Not ideal. Not ideal. Oh, hey, boy. Is he 300. Like, what the fuck? I mean, a bunch of 300. No, dog. And the Jayhawk. What do, what do I have to say? I, you know. I mean, it's only 100. It doesn't work. 20, 27 yaks. That's not bad. Yeah. I mean, 30, really 30 in three years. Couple that with fucking 129 strikeouts to fucking 37 walks. You know. You would, hey, you didn't you didn't include hit by pitches, but that's that was the push for three hundred. There's that's why I am currently coaching right now and not in uh, and spring training. Not, and I've gotten so many nice clips from this last half hour that you post. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna post them all. Just <laughs> fucking Reynolds, fucking living in the glory days. Oh, well, thank but, you for everyone tuning and, in. I did shove in those years that we were talking. Big facts, 11 and 3. How many cases uh, walks? Uh, let's see. 134 to 21 in 144 innings. Oh, damn. Come on. See, that's the ratio we're looking for. Come on. And now I'm a freaking hidden coach. Here we are. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, until next week, we shall see you then.